which is the one that allowed PNC Bank to receive $7.7 billion to offer a $5.7 billion buyout for National City Bank. Now, the Congressman, with all due respect, none of this is personal. I don't have a record to run on, and I know that when I try to point out her record in the few times we've been in front of each other, um, she gets upset and takes it personally, but she's only debated me here today. This has been closed door things. But the bottom line is the Congresswoman authorized the Department of the Treasury to do just what she now is decrying. And both parties, Republican and Democrats alike, going back over the last 30 or 40 years, have made government much too big. We talk about that there's no regu regulation. We talk about that there's not oversight. The good thing is most everyone in here has a job, I suspect, and they probably are working. If you're at home right now, you could turn on C-SPAN, and you could watch your government at work. Or in the evening, you can watch your government at work on C-SPAN. You can see the Department of, uh, the, of Finance, the Banking Oversight Committee. You can see all the different committees from the Senate and the U.S. House. Folks, our government officials are our regulators. The problem is, is that they have lacked in their oversight. And it's both parties. Both parties. And again, I'm trying to understand how the Congresswoman, maybe she can explain to us at some point during the day why she's on Fifth Avenue. She'll tell you Hillary Clinton hosted it, but the bottom line is we have a copy of this invitation. You're happy to look at it. Um, I'm just trying to understand why she needs Wall Street money, the very money she says is what's the excessive compensa compensation that is uh, taking things away from the middle class, why she's out there taking money from them. So I rest with my comments. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Potter. Congresswoman, you have three minutes and 45 seconds to respond. Thank you so much. Um, there are so many things that we accomplished in this first term, and I'd just like to turn your attention to uh, a few of them. My opponent talked about the fact that I got the endorsements from the major papers in my district, and I am very honored that we have all six of those endorsements. And then citing the reasons for those endorsements, and you heard bits and pieces of things, but um, certainly didn't get a, an accurate picture presented um, by the opposition, which I don't ex guess we would expect. Um, but I do encourage you to go on the website and look at all of those endorsements. And uh, I have to tell you, if the plum dealer endorsement has been taken down, it's been a mistake, and it's gone back up. Um, the, the reality of this is, uh, you know, my opponent has been launching attacks for months in an attempt to get some attention in this race. Um, I guess that's to be understood when you're uh, a, new, a new challenger out there on the scene. But the reality of this is being new is no excuse for not doing your homework or for launching baseless attacks, uh, just like the one that he launched today. Uh, you know, it's gotten so bad, and I've chosen most often to just ignore it. And I think that that's the best way to deal with things. But when it gets to a point where he sends people to disrupt events that are honoring our veterans in an attempt to get attention, I think that's a problem. And I also think it's a problem to cast aspersions about, I'm the only person up here on this stage who has a history, a history of not only acting with integrity in office, going beyond what the rules require, leaving, uh, back, uh, I should say, busting open backroom uh, meetings to protect the interests of those I represent. I'm the only one also with the history of reforming the system, of taking action that effectively changed the way business is being done. And I continue on that mission. So with all due respect, there are serious issues facing our communities. And I really hope that today we will have a chance to discuss them in a way that is worthy of the people of the 13th District. Because frankly, they deserve better than this. And if I am given the opportunity to serve them with their re-election, then that's exactly what I'm going to give them. Thank you. Congresswoman, thank you so much for your rebuttal. We now turn it over to a, the director of the City Club, Jim Foster, for some brief announcements. Jim? 
Thank you. Today at the City Club of Cleveland, we are listening to a debate between the candidates for United States Congress for Ohio's 13th District. We will return in a few moments for our traditional City Club questions, but first these announcements. We welcome you to the City Club Forum, the longest continuously running free speech forum in the country. Greetings to those present and those watching on WVIZ, listening to WCPN 90.3, or watching or listening to our webcasts and podcasts. Support for our television is provided by National City and Cleveland State University, and for our radio by Case Western Reserve University. Our podcast is, our live webcast, I'm sorry, is provided by the University of Akron. Visit our website, cityclub.org, for information about upcoming programs. There are three more debates here at the City Club this week. They are listed in your programs, and we hope you will return. We are very pleased to have sponsorship support for today's forum from the Sisters of Charity Health System. With us today at the head table are Dr. Daniel Flannery, board chair of the Sisters of Charity Foundation of Cleveland, and Brian Flannery, administrator of Regina Health Center. Would our please, uh, two uh, sponsors please stand for our recognition. <laughs> we are also pleased to welcome students who are joining us today from Open Door Christian School and Stowe Monroe Falls High Schools. Participation of these students is made possible by a generous grant from the Sh Freddie Schroll Foundation. Bernard L. Carr, Chairman. Would our student guests please stand? <laughs> They're getting a wonderful le lesson in civics today. Today, or now we would like to proceed with the question and answer period of our debate. Holding the microphones today are City Club Development Director Jessica Allen and Assistant Development Director Marcella Brown. Let's return to our moderator, Dan Malthrop. Thanks, Jim. Um, I will, before I explain how this next part will, will proceed, I want to encourage our students from Open Doors Christian and Stone and Row to really step up to the microphone. Let's get questions from you, too. Um, we're going to have the traditional City Club question and answer period now. Questions addressed to a specific candidate will be answered by that candidate in a minute. The other candidate may also comment for 30 seconds. Questions addressed to both candidates will be answered with one minute from each. As moderator, I get the opportunity to ask them to actually answer any question that they dodge and also follow up. And uh, that's sometimes the best part. And I thank you in advance also for your questions. And please, as you uh, get hold of that microphone or find that microphone in front of, your, of you, please make sure that you're asking a question and not making a speech, because sometimes that's not as much fun as hearing our candidates make speeches. So who has the first question? This question is for Congresswoman Sutton. Congresswoman, trade policies such as NAFTA and PNTR have hurt the American worker. Well, what can we do to make sure these trade policies are changed or corrected? Thank you for the question. Um, since I arrived in Congress, I've been working to develop a new trade model, one that will work with American businesses and workers and, and not against them. Frankly, um, those deals, those trade deals that uh, you referenced, uh, haven't always done well by our folks. They, uh, they lack any kind of protections, and frankly, they haven't been enforced either, so let's not lose sight of that. So uh, early on, I gathered together a group of folks, and uh, we went to work on, on putting into place a new trade model for a, uh, the new century moving forward. Um, we can reward companies that are good employers here in the United States instead of incentivizing sending jobs overseas. Those are some of the steps that should be included as we fix the broken system. It's not really that, as I said, trade is costing us jobs. It's more that our broken trade policies are costing us our jobs. Thank you, Congresswoman. Dave Potter, 30 seconds. Those trades policies you refer to obviously have been signed in NAFTA's case by a Democrat president uh, that Republicans willingly went, al went along with. Importantly, um, in part of that uh, NAFTA agreement, uh, there was an opportunity for uh, employees that lost jobs directly as a part of NAFTA to get job retraining. Only 14% of that money uh, has been uh, spent. The question is why. 